The views expressed on this program are not necessarily those of the Association for Software Testing, its management, sponsors, or staff. Rob is always a font of amazing information. He's graciously agreed to join us this evening and discuss the topics, and tonight's topic will be the keynote. I'm glad that's the one. That's the one. That's the one we're prepared for. So today's keynote was done by Karen. Karen Johnson. And it was moving testing forward. Mm -hmm. So let's just kick things off. What was your first takeaway from today's keynote? Well, um, first of all, I want to just um, be up front here. I've known Karen for years and years and years, and I'm a good and close friend of Karen. And one of the first things she said when she got on stage was she was just sitting next to me, who was a good friend of hers. So uh, that said, I'm not going to be biased in my discussion here. You know, I'll just right. be frank. <laughs> We're going to be real straightforward. Be, the good, be, the bad, be, and the ugly, as I said. Exactly. <laughs> So if you want me to, to sort of list in order the takeaways, uh, there's some, some stuff at the beginning was really shocking to me. I, I was expecting a talk about moving testing forward as testing as the sort of profession of testing, but it was sort of from the perspective of a tester, and I just found this absolutely and immensely practical. It wasn't sort of this vague generalization of the field's going to change, the world's going to have this thing, prognostication, we're writing a new version of the Bible here, we have to sort of talk about the apocalypse from the point of view of testing and all of this uh, prophetic stuff. It was none of that. It was really down to earth said, hey, you are a tester. You want to evolve. What's the goal? What's the next step? How do we get there? So I thought that this really, really was an awesome way to kick off a conference. I'd never seen something like that before. And I, I have to say it was pretty cool. So that my first takeaway is, wow, this is different. And it was something that was very personal. Yeah. Um, a little bit uh, delicate to get in that because when you're yes. talking about mm -hmm. that especially in a keynote you're exposing your sort of soft underbelly and uh, karen's uh, petite soft underbelly <laughs> 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 everyone saw it it was <laughs> it was interesting stuff well, and, and i think that was one of the things that i found most striking even in her opening right so she opens with this slideshow that you know tracks her whole career and her personal life in it and there were moments where i was like I was moved, you know, like she, she talks about these various milestones in her life between career stuff to like, you know, her parents passing and, and, and she just allowed us into her whole experience. May, may I speak towards that? So, so this is a style of presentation, which I love. Um, it's, it's not just going meta. It's sort of what you're demonstrating is what you want people to walk away with. Mm -hmm. And what she called it, her, the word she used was a portfolio. Mm -hmm. She says, what is your portfolio? And this little sort of presentation, the mini presentation she kicked mm -hmm. off with was an example of that. It was just beautiful. And uh, so by, by demonstrating by example what, you know, what is your portfolio and think of what you're doing from that perspective. I think it was a little bit marketing mm -hmm. oriented, but it was uh, the style. You're not, you're not just talking about it. You're doing it. So. That's what she started with. I think that was a nice kickoff. Unexpected, as I said. You're walking yeah, in this. It's absolutely. unusual. It's out of your comfort zone. It's pretty cool. And she talked to, she talked a lot about soft skills, which is highly unusual, at least at the testing conferences I've attended. And it's an important thing to cover. And I, I don't know that all folks who are in engineering really understand that well. Okay. Um, if I can talk towards that. Absolutely. Uh, first of all, it, it was actually... Uh, talking about topics which usually are put in a category of soft skills. So so soft skills, if you name it as soft skills, is a misnomer. Um, actually, I think uh, dealing with bosses who don't care about what you're doing, and I'm, I'm not going to curse here, but I would normally say who don't give a shit, but I'm not going to say that <laughs> in, on a public Nobody video. heard that. Because, yeah, because right. th yeah. that's what she was talking about, is how to deal with people who don't care and still do productive work and gain respect. Mm -hmm. And that I don't consider a soft skill in any way, shape, or form. Like, this is not kumbaya stuff, believe me. Mm -hmm. It's not that type of soft skills. It's the people skills. It's mm -hmm. the... It's the 
personal skills. It's the non-technical testing skills mm -hmm. that can influence and affect change that she was talking about. So I, I really wouldn't char characterize them <coughs> as, <coughs> as soft skills. I would characterize them as people skills. <coughs> Brilliant job of exposing them all, every single one, as a great example to community with first-person stories. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. sometimes even looking in the room saying, well, let's see, was anyone there? You know, I don't want to insult you. I don't, but this really <laughs> happened. <laughs> right. So it was awesome. She shared at least eight um, little anecdotal uh, personal stories to make her points. A good example to the community of how to share that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. Not kumbaya, though. Right. No. No. <laughs> mm -mm. No, not a bit. Absolutely not. So it's a hard look at soft skills, maybe. Yeah. So the, the other thing that I took away that was kind of interesting is the question everything or everyone, which is testing at its essence, I thought. Um, and this is something <coughs> that I tend to tell people is don't just blindly trust what you see or hear. Mm -hmm. Test it. If it's, if it's really something, if it's really from an expert or someone who knows what they're talking about, then testing them shouldn't be a problem. Um, I think that I, I've seen personally too many testers who are willing to forego the testing portion due to reputation, which I thought was, is always kind of interesting. Right. Yeah, it's it sort of, uh, some of those points came out uh, gracefully from her talk, uh, but you got to remember, some of those points came out of the open season. True. It, and it's, it's not just the talk at a cast conference, True. it's what you draw from um, the talk uh, that comes up. But yeah, I think that uh, she, she made strong points mm -hmm. uh, yeah. in, in those areas about challenging things, about not just trusting someone because they're sort of known as a guru, but at the same time, she was saying, but still you have to earn and build a reputation. So right. it's like right. you've got to not just be famous because you're a good orator, you've got to sort of put your proof in the pudding. And I, I, I take that very seriously because I do a lot of t talking and public speaking, and I don't want it just because I can do a good talk that people respect me. I want it to be because I've done real stuff. Right. And well, so and, you know, first person stuff. One of the things that I noted on the same same theme here, I think so far we've all pulled the same themes, um, was this idea of like don't don't ask me to tell you how you should change your career, how you should move yourself forward. She's like, why you know the question of why would you look to some expert to tell you what you should be doing when when really you are your own expert and you're going to be that person that that knows you best and yeah, and so how you work. So for people who didn't see the talk, mm -hmm. she did mention a few times that in her career people have come up to her and asked her without giving her hardly any context information like no background no business no technical no organizational cultural background asking her what should i do next as if we have some sort of prescription in the testing industry oh you're there uh, next you should do this and then you should do here that. are the seven tick if you marks. don't learn java then you can't learn ruby and and, <laughs> and, and <laughs> don't use this tool until you've mastered that tool so yeah Rob, sure you you've been doing this for a while what should i do next with my career yeah exactly <laughs> uh, you know you should get married and have 16 kids and oh. then <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's it. I'm not asking you for but, advice. But what's ever really again. cool is that Karen. People ask her this. So <laughs> like, people don't ask me that. People ask Karen that, and um, sh she responded with with some interesting things. And one of her points, I think that um, I hope that uh, people get from it. I don't know if you've posted her talk online. It, it, it will go that up. Will yep. be, that will be awesome Absolutely. for people to please watch it if you have a chance. And pay attention to the notion of Karen explaining that really you should be observing yourself. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, I think that if you're expecting other people to tell you what to do, well, look at yourself. Yeah. What are you really doing? And then how does this mesh with your goals and what matters to you? Right. And don't be afraid to move on. It's, 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 it's hard. Uh, Karen has is, is been very fortunate to have a lot of hardship at, at critical times in her career and to turn them into opportunities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And maybe there's, there's people like Karen should be doing a lot of keynotes because a lot of us f hit these hardships and we become depressed or we sort of find them dead end career paths and stuff like that. Uh, one of the most beautiful stories she shared about that had to be her issue about mathematics. I don't know if you caught yeah. the story of math. Yeah. Now, this for me is a big issue in testing. I, I'm a big advocate of people in testing actually using math and I run into a lot of people who are sort of afraid of using math or they just don't yeah. do it or they don't know right. they should do it. <laughs> and Karen is one of these math averse people and uh, she talked about actually succeeding in, pro in performance testing, but realizing that, hey, 
to, to succeed in this forever would be to be sort of in math. Math is not something I really enjoy learning, and maybe I can. There's no doubt I could. Right, <laughs> right. But <laughs> there's other things I want to do. And so she moved out of that area. And that, te- that, that was a very important part of her message. I adapting. Think, basically adapting, and not all people are good at all things. And to know what you're good at. And this is the... Remember, s- know what you're good at. Yeah, know, know what you're good at and play to your strengths. You can you can build up on your weaknesses, but always play to your strengths. Yeah, well, and this is the second time the self-retro concept has come up at CAST. Okay. Don Haynes talked about doing self-retros in 2013. Well, as a matter of fact, we did a retrospective of her retrospective on that. Yes. I remember, I remember distinctly. <laughs> yeah, that's right. She, she did a self-retrospective mm-hmm. analysis thing. And I think we have to be very cautious about that because when you're looking at yourself, uh, the, the you're always... Uh, um, Risking having, uh, I think, a very critical view, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, you're you're very biased. Uh, it's hard to look at it from other people's eyes. Many speakers at this conference mm-hmm. this week have already asked me, Rob, can you give me feedback on my talk? And I tell people, no. <laughs> wait, t- wait two weeks. No, I say that. I say, yeah. wait, pause, breathe a bit, get out of the zone get out of the crisis of the moment and then do this retrospective mm-hmm. and look back at what, what you did and start to get feedback. I think Karen has had just chances to, to, to change her career path based on this sort of retrospective stuff. It's nice. It's good. Yeah. It's, it's not a typical thing you see at a testing conference keynote and yet it's an important message which really can help you move testing forward in your career. Mm-hmm. I just love that. So it makes it thematic. Mm-hmm. I think it's pretty cool. Excellent. Okay. You can judge that if you want. <laughs> the Another thing that I pulled out. Yeah. <laughs> like, on like a one to ten scale? Or like Seven. Ten. I don't know. <laughs> you said excellent. So <laughs> but you don't know how high but the scale goes. No, when someone says that, I just think I'm in Wayne's world. <laughs> Party time. Excellent. Oh, my you got God. It. Car. Exactly. <laughs> uh, you were going to ask me about the coolest takeaway. Contributing to the community. <laughs> yeah. That That's was that was a pretty big one, and good. it's something that I spend a lot of time thinking about. Is you know how much are you contributing to the community? Mm-hmm. What is your legacy going to be to the community? That's and I would say, and my comments were, I feel as if there are too many consumers and not enough producers. But maybe I'm wrong mm-hmm. in that. I, I think it's it's really important to talk about things like that. Um, I hope people are aware that they have multiple dimensions in their careers and their lives. There's, there's sort of your personal life, your family, your life with your family. Uh, there's a professional life. There's a spiritual life. Mm -hmm. And I think that, uh, the community, the professional community is part of your professional life. And you're, if you're going to, uh, start looking at what can I do? I think, what can I contribute to the community is a beautiful thing. If you can share something, if you can help make the community a better place, uh, that's a wonderful thing. This is my blood, sweat, and tears. This is what I try to do, mm-hmm. right? and I fail right. all the time. I, I've, <laughs> I've screwed up badly. Is it possible to succeed? I don't know. I think <clears throat> that Karen did. I think what she did with rest, a specific example, uh, is awesome. I think that rest is a lasting legacy in the testing community, and rest is the workshop on regulated software testing. Uh, And it's got a popularity that's so different from any other peer conference in the world. It is not like a a whopper. It is Mm -hmm. not like a lost conference. It is not a typical peer conference. And uh, the regulated software community has sort of latched onto it. And it runs. And she's, Karen is a founding member and actively built that from nothing. Right. And I think that's a legacy. I think really, truly, that's a legacy. And I think that it has made a difference and will make a difference uh, socially, domestically, internationally, it's important. And the regulated software community didn't have a community before There was that no existed. outlet. Yep. And so Karen invented it. And, uh, you know, I, I walk in, I, I'm frustrated. I try to create things. She did it. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and, and that's one of the things I think was really nice about the way she framed all of that, too, because she talked about how, how do you actually leave a legacy within the community how do you affect change how do you contribute and in what way you know you know what do you want to leave behind and i think the how is a really hard question for most people who are just working as testers day to day trying to like survive in their own jobs well 
between my job, my life, my kids, my whatever, like, how am I supposed to take time and contribute to the community? Like, I don't have anything left. It may be important, but then, like, where do you go and, and, and uh, what do you tackle and how big and what's yeah. enough? It's And do, she admitted do, it's really hard. Well, do we need uh, to be giving a legacy to I mean is that right. arrogant or is that I know it is that's a big life? yeah I, I, I think that some of us Not do a damn good do job that. day by day and get the work done yeah. and go home mm-hmm. and we make a difference only to the people that are our direct uh, family mm-hmm. uh, but I think Karen is suggesting that we have an opportunity especially in the field of chatting it's such a new field it's such an emerging field that we can make a difference and we can actually learn things and sort of help the next generation avoid making the mistakes and build on what we've learned and right. so Karen demonstrates by example how she does it how she segues that into the talk is also quite graceful I don't think that it was perfect but it was quite graceful that it, it came out that it was something that she showed by example that I can make a difference beyond just what is Karen's thing and what is in her bank account and what is her family that mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. is a lasting contribution I think also I, I applaud people who are involved like you guys involved in, in the AST and cast that's really what you're doing you know and it's a great thing and i hope all testers uh if they have a chance to do it do a little bit of that stuff so it's a great takeaway and i think to your point leaving a legacy doesn't necessarily have to be something that's public i mean it could be something as simple as being a fantastic manager or a fantastic employee or mentoring another tester mentoring even just one person that's all it takes that's huge that that makes a big difference that's really all it takes and yeah absolutely any other points so there's five (laughs) <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> but, but how many seconds? We, we have, have we have two minutes. So, okay, right. so first of all, uh, taking individual responsibility for teaching people things. Yes. Uh, uh, having your boss as an ally, not necessarily a friend or a coach. I yes. love that. That was great. That's beautiful. Um, uh, the whole notion of age discrimination in software testing. I love that. And that sparked uh, a whole conversation that in the was whole the, that room. Was the biggest, I, that was That beautiful. was the biggest thread at this conference so far. Right. And I just loved it. I just felt like going up to my room and bringing my cane out and starting <laughs> whacking people. You kids, get so, off my so lawn. Just stop. Just don't. Hey, I'm a grandfather now. <laughs> uh, so I, I, I really relate. I got three grandkids. Um, I think that the, there's there's the risk of celebrityness. It's too easy to post things online. It's too easy to, to yeah. Twitter things and watch what you're doing and you know be cautious about that. And uh, that was interesting. So what she called the notion of celebrityness, and uh, she also try, tried to challenge people that no one else cares about the balance of your life except you. Uh, and you've got to be careful if your if your project team management is causing your life to be out of whack. Hey, it's one thing to be sort of out of whack for a few days, but uh, you know, you've got a balanced life. You've got to do things. You've got your family, you've got your spiritual life, you've got your, your professional life, you've got your careers. It can't just be one way. It's got to be multidimensional. And I think that Ka- uh, Karen left us with a lot of really powerful messages about that. Uh, what I'd call, uh, by the way, if you look at my stuff and my work, mm-hmm. I call it value sync. I think you want to be with people that you're in sync on fundamental values. And so that, that was a really powerful thing. How did this get squished now into a, <laughs> a, a, a keynote? Uh, you got to come to CAST to experience right. this stuff because this is the magic of CAST. This, mm-hmm. We can do this. You can't do this at other conferences. No. You know, We draw this stuff out. You know, whatever you say, the audience, the group, will draw <laughs> messages out of it. You wouldn't yes. believe what we're going to get from you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. In the last Wait. few seconds, if there's one thing that you could either improve on if you were doing this talk, what would you have changed? Oh, I, I would certainly never have done so much in, in one time. It's would, a lot. I would, I it was a lot yeah, to tackle. I would have taken even just like one of them and made them into a beautiful, uh, I think any one of the things we just mentioned uh, could have made a beautiful session. Um, uh, I don't like uh, the, you know, I'm always uncomfortable with programs in general. If I can't go to every talk in the session and say, how does it relate to the keynote? So in this particular case, and this is, I don't want to read, this is a negative criticism, but if I would do something different, I would try to tie the theme closer so that when I go to other talks, I can tie it to the keynote or discuss, like, how does this relate to the keynote? And I can't do that. Karen's talk is personal. It's still personal. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. It's like, I walk away with so much stuff, but I can't tie it to the other talk. So if, if you wanted my opinion, what would I do different? It's not anything Karen did. It's how the program relates to it. Yep. And uh, I made it, maybe had her focus on maybe like one or two things. Mm Mm-hmm. And and then tie that a little closer to the, the theme, but it's just okay. anyway. It, it you was can't change it. It's awesome, yeah. wonderful, lots of stuff. And and mine comes in the form of a concern, 
which is uh, a lot of topics were covered, a lot of personal stories were shared, but I'm concerned that some people might not be able to take those things and put them into action. Yeah. Well, and, and especially with the, the quality of some of the questions and the amount of self-awareness that it takes to really act on some of the things she's challenging people, it, it is hard to take away and, and say, oh, I can go, I, now I know what to do next. Yes. Like, well, My hope is I that know. people like, can. But if you but can take the time and really reflect and sink in on the various themes she's got, there, there's, there's just a wealth of wonderful stuff in there. And yours? Um, I, I, I'm going to be lame. I, I haven't really got a lot. I wish she it was had more perfect. time. No, I mean, I wish she were a morning person. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Fair you know? enough. That's, there's always that. I, I there's wish there. I, I wish she hadn't gone over time because then I think we had. I was facilitating. We had like you know seven, eight, nine other questions on the of stack we didn't even get to, and we have no idea what those questions would have nope. been. You know. Uh, yeah. Well, someone was explaining how red cards worked, and it got very confusing. <laughs> I, just, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's where we'll end it then. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Rob. Rob thank, thank you, you for joining us, and we'll see you tomorrow. Absolutely. We'll see you tomorrow. All right.